So we drove down here to a car dealer and we want to check out a car. So we just checked out this car in all detail. I even pulled the oil filter. The engine is still cranking and it got a lot of chips in the oil filter. So I assume it's a bearing failure and it has a very, very, very poor service history. I think it just needs a big engine repair. Other than that, the car is in excellent condition. It's almost in better condition than our black discovery here. You're waiting for rain? No, oh. Yeah, okay, careful, yeah? That's why I was waiting, so you don't have to say careful. Okay, careful. <laughs> so would this be a car? Or do you think it's too risky to buy a bearing failure? Because on a bearing failure, guys, it is possible that the block cannot be salvaged. And then the repair cost is going to exceed our budget big time. It's a beautiful car. It's in perfect shape. Yeah, it's a nice it's, one. It's the nicest one we have ever seen, you know. So Very I think cool. he has to reduce his price a little further to give us a little more room. It's a little bit of a cat in the sack. How light that door is. Look at the trunk. What? I talked to the boss and he did the visit. Yes. Oh, he might be able to fit in here. So our new project discovery four. Look at that pretty boy. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, he has to release a parking brake. <laughs> I think they let the engine run when they loaded him. I hope they didn't. That would be a real, real bad thing. You see the... Ah! Oh, did you hear the parking brake? It opened. <laughs> oh my god. The parking brake is working. Got it at least in front of our gate. Oh, I gotta pay him first. <laughs> then we gotta get the thing hooked up and drawn in here. That's gonna be exciting for Vera. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like the battery, this way we have electrical power to release the parking brake. I know the desktop mechanic's gonna say now that you can pull a cable in the passenger compartment to release it. I need to somehow unlock the steering wheel. And that's also much easier with electrical power to it. Yeah, as long as and, you don't start it. And in addition, I can listen to the radio when Vera pulls me in. Oh, I have to do that shit again. That's really not my favorite. Oh my God, he's not going to see anything. Isn't that a perfect setup? <laughs> so for some reason, he's going to make me use my Discovery 3, which is a manual, instead of our automatic mall crawler. The yellow... This is good enough. Oh my god. <laughs> so we kind of block traffic here for a moment. So now. Okay, now listen. All you got to do now is roll backwards until I honk the horn or start waving because the horn isn't working. So I am gonna turn again? No, you, you, you just roll back on the street. Okay? Not on the grass, on the street. Just like if you would normally enter our driveway. Blinker on here. There you go, and I do the same. Keep on going. Okay, when you are far enough down, you can now f go forward into our driveway. Why are you so stressed? Huh? <laughs> How can you be so stressed? So we got the car in our driveway. That's always very stressful for Vera. And I have to stay calm and direct her around, okay? This one has supposedly an engine failure, 
but it still does start, so I assume it has a bearing failure. And according to the seller, it died at a gas station. Basically, he stopped to get gas, and when he got back into the car, he said it didn't start anymore. If you suspect an engine failure, every second you let it run, you will cause further damage. If you run the engine when it's broken, it's going to get really bad and more expensive. Yes. That car was in pristine condition. And now she and, found a scratch. And there is a bad scratch and they did that yeah, by they did loading. That. So right now we can't agree on a single thing. <laughs> I mean, look at the dirt pattern here and the rust, okay. you know, the kind of... I think the, that car was waiting. There is no waiting in Germany. You know Yes, that. but in Denmark is waiting yeah. and in yeah. France. Okay. We're going to replace the battery and put a healthy one in here, even though the engine is dead and we can't do anything with the car. But if we want to test out what's going on, like reading the faults and other things, we got to have a healthy battery. Maybe they got the wrong kind of fuel, you know, because <laughs> it broke down on a gas station. Christian is annoyed by my theories. No, it's okay. It's uh, completely <laughs> fine. Good theory. It broke down on the gas station because they got wrong fuel and then they sold the car to us with an engine failure. At least we looked at the cars this time before we bought it. So my hands are all clear. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Probably would have been easier if I would have put it... <laughs> Why don't you lift this battery up onto the car? You're not up there, you're on, the, you're on the light. And you are sure you could maneuver this in here, right? Yeah. Okay, now you can take the camera again. <laughs> I'm not you, complaining. Whatever you complain. <laughs> the original batteries have the year right stenciled into the pole here, 15. So now we got power now. Now I can unlock it for you and you can get into the car. So we're sitting in our new to us Land Rover Discovery 4. This is actually a 2016 with Ed Blue, so deaf fluid. It's a 15. It's a Okay, it's a 12, 20, 15. Yeah, I yeah. round it up and it's a 16. Yeah. Our mall crawler is a 10, 15 or 11, 15 and does not have Ed Blue. It makes a big difference because Ed Blue is Gen 2 engine. Yes? <laughs> Don't do that. This vehicle is a hair newer than our current Land Rover Discovery 4. This is basically the same vehicle, except this one is a black edition without Ad Blue, and this one does have the Ad Blue. In Germany, this car has a better resale value. You can still drive this in the city. Yes, in Darmstadt, there are two roads where I cannot drive, and with that car, I can. Okay, so you want to have that car? Yes, I'm going to drive that car then. Uh, the car is even in a broken condition like this in Germany, quite a good value, okay? So this is not like in the UK when they post, oh, I want like 2,800 pounds for it on Facebook and then everybody writes back, oh, I'll give you 500 and the car is like a yeah. 2015 D4. Exactly, in the UK, that car with the price we paid would be a runnable, be a runnable. with okay. the kilometers we so. have on it. Our mall crawler, we've had it for almost two years, has not provided reliable content for YouTube. It's just sitting there because Christian loves his queen. This car has not provided any content because it's just too reliable. It's too good of a condition. We're not getting any use out of it. I drive it to work once in a while. And now where we got the queen. Let's check out the interior first. And I want to tell you guys something about a Discovery 4 to understand the trim level and what really is standard and what is really an option and how to look at it. Because if you go to a dealer and you look at this car, they tell you, oh, it's fully loaded, it got everything, and it's an HSE and so on. And no, it's not. There are a few unique, small things you need to know when you check out a Discovery 4. The outside trim level, this one is an HSE. So an HSE usually comes with the sunroof and it comes with leather seats. But this one has the premium leather nice seats. Nice leather seats, yes. The premium leather seats are different from the regular ones 
by the double stitching here. Their leather is much smoother, much nicer. So somebody was massaging that cow <laughs> many days before the cow got butchered and they made that leather out of it. And then they double stitched it here. So if you look at photographs in your auto trader, you got to look for that double stitching. And if you're really lucky, you find one which has that. That means the car has premium leather. This oh. one has more the feeling of the Range Rover leather. Yeah. Also, if you got the premium leather, this thing got leather on top. See right here? It's stitched all the way around. The second thing you got to really pay attention is they always tell you it's the premium sound system. What you got to do to see if you have the premium sound system is you look at the back. If you have the speakers in the B column, that's the premium sound system because every discovery comes with a great sound system in the HSE trim level. But only if you purchase the premium sound system, you have those two additional speakers. So this thing has actually then 850 watts or something. Don't quote me on that instead of like 600 and it got like half a dozen speakers more. I don't know exactly. Okay. They all have the Meridian sound system right here. Now that batch alone does not make up the premium sound system those speakers do. My queen outside also has this sound system because it has the basic sound system in an autobiography, which is the same sound system as the upgraded system in an HSE D4. You can see how Land Rover staggers their vehicle. They can't really put stuff in here what exceeds the queen. The, the highest level on a Discovery is a basic trim level on a L405. The ads always show, oh, it got the camera system, okay? These vehicles are available with the surround camera system. It sucks technology-wise and it's not worth it. But if you have that surround camera system, then this button here, which has here this musical note on it, is actually showing a little camera symbol. So I can see on the first few in the picture, in the auto trader, that this does not have surround camera system. And if the guy tells me it's surround camera system, I know it's not. The next thing I look in the pictures, which is on an HSE, no problem, because it's always fully equipped, is what kind of a suspension setup does it have? I look in the pictures at the center council section here. It got to look like this. And if it has this button, it's the start stop system. So it must be a facelift past 2015 Discovery 4. If it does not have that start-stop system button, it's a pre-facelift. If you see any blanks here in this field, exactly. it's a under-equipped Discovery 4. The car is going to be five or six grand cheaper than one which has these buttons because these are overlanding rigs. That's what they're used for. If they don't have the two-speed transfer case, people don't buy them. Yeah. No. Oh. oh, shit. He locked. He locked it now. He locked it now. now. Don't okay. start it. The next thing I want to show you is you typically find in an auto trader a picture looking straight at the steering wheel and straight at the dash. And what I check out there is if it has this button here. This button shows me that it has the heated steering wheel. It needs to have the cold climate package. <laughs> it also comes with the heated seats. Another option you can see based on the steering wheel is if you have the adaptive cruise control. If you have that, there are actually two buttons here. This vehicle doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Another very unique feature, which you see typically on the pictures, is if it has the automatic steering column, which is right here. That switch is sometimes only a planking cap. Even so you have an HSE equipped vehicle, it does not have that. What that means is if you turn the key off, the steering wheel will actually lift up and the seat goes down into the rest position and you can control your steering wheel up and down and in and out electrically which is maybe useful to some people, but not to me. Another thing you want to take a look at is if you got here the buttons with the numbers on it, on the door. This is basically telling you it has the memory driver seat function. And that usually comes equipped with this control panel here on the driver seat and a reduced control panel over on the passenger seat. Yes. I only have two. On the queen, I have at least six or yes. seven. You can see this switch on the passenger door does not have memory seat functions. Now, what does the queen have? Our Range Rover in autobiography. It has also memory seat function on the passenger seat, including the full controls on the seat on the side. So that is again where you distinguish between a 
Range Rover and an HSE equipped Discovery 4. It ends somewhere. It doesn't cut into the luxury level of a Range Rover. Yeah. This is really important to know. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, the Range Rover is the better car for you. Another thing which you need to check, which is usually stated wrong in the sales literature, is if it got a rear diff lock. And here you go to the 4x4 info screen. And in that info screen, you can see I only got a center diff lock. I don't have the rear diff lock, otherwise there would be a green circle here. In Germany, that function was only sold at 3% of the vehicle, so it's extremely rare to get one. Another thing what I check out when I look at a vehicle like this on the pictures is what kind of a color it has on the inlays here. This one is the piano black. Yeah, you can it's see the, that here. The piano black. That is, in my opinion, suiting the best to the black leather. Here you can clearly see the adaptive cruise control controls, okay? So you mean that? No, that? here there are buttons here. Oh, I didn't even notice them. Yeah, they, they're anyway not good for you. It <laughs> yeah. also has the electric steering column and yeah. it also has the premium leather seats. Oh, and it's got more buttons. And, and it does have more buttons and it also has the memory seat. So these are pretty equivalently equipped, but this one is not a black edition. You can see that the lettering on this one is indeed black and yes. dirty. Okay. Here the lettering is black and the grill is black. By the way, this one comes with black rims, but these are right now the winter tires. Yes. The black edition, by the way, also has 20 inch rims. Inlay here on the side is silver on yeah. this one. It's black. We're actually going to replace that grill. It's silver and this one was black. And so, the discovery is also grayish. Yes. You can also see from the outside if the vehicle has add blue without having to open the tank lid. If you look underneath here, that this spare wheel tire has this cover over it. This cover basically protects the rim because the rim is put on with the good side facing downwards because there is stuff inside the spare wheel. The add blue tank, the add not blue stuff. Tank. <laughs> Whereas when you look on this one, which yep. you can clearly see there's just the spare wheel and no cover on it, and the good side is facing up. Yep. Power. We couldn't do that when we looked at the car. You need to check if it has a rear AC system, okay? When you look at pictures in the Auto Trader and you see actually control knobs right here, that means the vehicle has the rear AC system. Okay, the Queen has rear AC. Yes. Now, in the US, these cars typically have some sort of an entertainment system also. So you have screens in the headrests. That stuff is typically outdated because it's out of 2015. Trust me, if you present that to your teenagers going on vacation, they're going to go dead. What the hell is that? These cars are available with seven seats. You got to think twice if you really want that. That's not really useful if you want to use them as an overland rig because you're going to have to take these out. Also, the seven seaters have airbags back here. They might be in your way when you do certain things on the vehicle. And you can see it lays flat completely, but it occupies all this room versus in Vera's car. She basically got food in this area for like two weeks. Yes. Okay. If you have the rear climate system, then this area here is occupied and it's actually just, you know, flat or really small. Another important thing what gets missed many times when people look at their vehicle is the trailer hitch still there. And it must be right here. If you're missing this part in the UK, it's probably two bucks fifty, but over here in Germany, it has a sale value of 450 euros. Check if it's there. The trunk cover. The trunk cover is here also missing because people keep it in their basement because it's a completely useless piece. It's always in the way. So everybody has it in its basement and then it ends up in the trash. Now, another thing you want to make sure it's still there is the jack. You can see it's right here. The tools with it, they are right here. Okay. And in case you have a lock nut, I don't see a lock nut. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, shit. Most likely we're going to have to deal now with lock nuts and we don't have the tool for it because it's not in here and, and also sometimes the lock nut is down here in one of those deep crevasses a toyota has crevices in a, in a sock <laughs> in a dirty sock in a sock oh my okay God. now that was good luck because we had to deal with this before if this piece is missing you do for a real exercise okay yeah. oh look we even got the screwdriver really? and it has a flat side on the other side when these fenders here basically are scratched up 
it drops the value of the vehicle terribly but they are really easy to replace you open like three bolts and you pop them off put a new one on and you can usually buy them on ebay in the final color so you're actually looking for a vehicle which is scratched up here on the fenders okay because the sellers typically don't know the value and how much it is to replace this another way overrated thing when you buy a vehicle are the brakes and the tires and the rims it's completely irrelevant how the condition of those pieces are you can use that to negotiate the price down with the seller but really when you get a vehicle like this you just put four new brakes in completely with shoes and everything and pads and everything and it costs you like not even 300 euros it's not worth it also the tires okay it doesn't matter the condition of the tires because you're not going to drive around with them anyhow if you use them as an overland rig you're going to buy yourself most likely some rims or you dress those rims back up we've done that before and then we put nice tires on it so and everything we say does not apply to any of our uk drivers because those things are dirt cheap there anyway we basically mm. pay the price for a set of rims and tires on this vehicle what this car would be worse with a failed engine in the uk according to the smart facebook groups we follow <laughs> yes. now let's check out the engine compartment the first thing i do is i reach underneath here and see if there's any oil there okay that tells me if the intake tract is somewhat leaking yeah and it is leaking so this is another sign that this vehicle was driven and not really deeply maintained because if it would be really good maintained this would be all clean there would be no oil there check this hose i check this hose if it got this valve installed right here it's actually a true parking heating system and in fact i never had a discovery with this valve installed okay the queen has a true park heating system so even if you got the remote controlled start to start the parking heater if you don't have that valve the parking heat system is basically useless. Yes, it generates some heat, but it doesn't put it into the cabin. Only if you got this valve, which is a rare option in Germany, it actually puts the heat into the cabin. So what we do when we check out a diesel engine in a Discovery is we pull the oil filter. On a failed engine it's different, but I want to show you guys how I do that. Now what's important if I loosen this like about two turns, I got to wait now a little bit so the oil can drain out of the oil filter housing down into the oil pan. And I push these hoses out of the way and then I get this out in a clear sweep. Pull this oil filter out and you need strong fingers, which I got, and I pulled it out. Okay, this light is kind of bad because it's putting a lot of clear out, but here you can see chips. This is not all clear. Yeah. So I see, I see bearing chips in here. Oh, look at that here. A mm. lot of fine bearing chips. Yeah. Even if it would be now running and still sounding somewhat okay, with this amount of chips inside the filter housing, it's not going to run much longer. Yeah. And we, of course, did that when we looked at the cars. Even a healthy Discovery 4 with the 3 liter engine, you will find one or two chips, yeah. but not 10. Especially if you run it with 5W dumbass. Did you see that it has no coolant left? That's what I wanted to say. The car doesn't have any coolant. I wonder why. Cool. Was it neglected? And do we have a blown head gasket now? And that's where all the oil went. Ooh, it has that same power steering hose leak. Oh no. Would we just fixed on yours. We're going to have to order anyway. Oh, that looks nice. Look I've never seen that before. Oh, we oh, start stop battery. So what is that? That is a power management system for the second small battery here. I thought we we're going to show them how to turn the crank. <laughs> so because that means it's going to be a walk in the park separating the transmission from the engine, which was a huge debacle on our blue discovery with a locked up engine. And you cannot disagree with me. Read the fault codes. There we go. And I got only 16% of battery left. And that's just enough to get this done here. Okay, there's our car. It says now not activated on this vehicle because I don't have a license for this vehicle. And what I do now is I read the faults before I even start the engine for the first time. If I'm looking at a runnable discovery, I don't go there and start the engine and start driving around and then I'm doing this. I'm doing that as the very first thing, okay? And most likely the previous owner 
did not have this tool. Of course not. He was not technically interested in that car. No, maybe it was his wife driving it. Couldn't Only men that. keep their cars that clean. I'm sorry. That's also the first car we buy, which has half a tank of diesel. It broke in the gas days. Here are all our faults. And what we got to understand now is that this car had a dead battery. So most of these faults will be irrelevant. So if it says here lost communication with something, it's called a U-fault. I can skip that. I don't need to look at any of those. Lost communication, invalid data, battery voltage, all related to the battery. Windshield misting sensor component failure. Internal failure. That is going to cost money, okay? That fault represents exactly to the sensor. So they were fumbling around with it because the cover is missing. If the windshield misting sensor is faulty, the car is not able to regulate the humidity in the passenger cab. You will see your windows fog up, believe me. If you have a good tool like me, I would reset the faults, then take the vehicle for a test drive and then see what faults come back. Those are the bad ones, okay? There shouldn't be any faults coming back. Lost communication is not a problem. That's normal almost. Diesel exhaust fluid heater control unit supply voltage. General electrical failure. So something there is broken. With the I'm Adblue gonna, system. Yeah, I'm going to take a screenshot of this one. What Christian is doing here, it's not an app you can download in the App Store. It's a Gap Bluetooth device that you plug in down here and you buy for a couple of hundred dollars. Four faults it was not able to clear. And if I look at those now, ventilation, there's our windshield misting sensor. That thing is 124 euros. It's done. Secondary battery component failure. So this little battery we looked at in the compartment in the front, it needs a new one. It's going to be 70 euros. Really, this check only revealed two, maybe three problems. Okay, new misting sensor, new battery, and maybe something with this diesel exhaust fluid heater, whatever that is. Sounds maybe expensive. we can find that while we take it apart. I'm going to start this vehicle. No, don't do that. Yes, I'm no. going to turn it off right away. I want to hear what the engine is doing. No, oh, please don't. Okay, listen. No, listen. no, stop. I'm going to do that now. I, I, am I going to be outside or am I going to be in here filming? I'd rather in here because outside you're going to panic even more. No, please okay, don't. Okay, here, really short. Turn the ignition on. Stop. It cranks over, so we don't have a locked up crank. I almost want to say I heard it starting to fire. Well, the okay, other... Okay, can we focus now on this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check the oil level here. So I go to the maintenance menu here. This is German, unfortunately, still. I can't get the oil reading right now. I don't know. Somehow that cancel button isn't working. And no, it has nothing to do with the wait time. I know exactly how to overwrite this, okay? The vehicle had absolutely no oil level. It was below min. I'm going to have all desktop mechanics now telling me that, oh, you got to hit the button and open the hood. I know how to do that, okay? On a Discovery 4, there is no dipstick. So you have to go through the computer to display the oil level and you have to keep certain wait times. If you don't keep those wait times, you have to hit the cancel button twice and pop the bonnet and then you can actually see it in the service menu. And it better be good if it's sold to you as a functioning car. You guys noticed that I just tested the seat while Vera was talking all the way up and all the way down. <laughs> no, stop. Chris, stop it. Stop. it, uh, it didn't that sounded stop. like a really mm. bad engine failure. Yeah. Okay, I got this over with now. We can stop. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you didn't hear anything, guys, but it, it is a broken engine and you're not supposed to start but a broken engine. What do we know now? It's broken. No, we know now that the timing system is okay, that we don't have to replace any sensors when we take it apart. We know the ECU is working. We know the compression is there. The car started up really good. We know we gained a lot out of this test oh. and it did probably less than five revolutions and then I turned it back off. So you sometimes have to disagree with your wife <laughs> because if you take this baby apart and you don't know the condition at all, you're taking a certain risk when you put it back together that there is some stupid sensor for what you have to take it apart again. I don't know how good it came across on the camera. 
it sounded really, really bad, but I heard it firing on all cylinders. It started up like after the third revolution with a relatively weak battery. I know the fuel system is working now, so a lot of stuff I can knock off my list. And all we got to do is fix a little bit of crankshaft and bearing yeah, stuff. But Vera didn't let me do that, and I did it anyhow. If you Why cause you damage tonight? now, I'm going to sleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it, okay? If I'm doing bad stuff, she sleeps on the couch. Yes. We're going to have to continue in the morning. We're going to raise the car up and we look underneath. Yes. And we finish off this video. Yes. Right? And yes. And after that, we're going to fix the front suspension of Vera's Discovery 3. <sighs> Everybody is waiting for it. Whenever we buy a new vehicle, Vera is kind of concerned about our financial situation. And there's no reason about it. We got like 1,500 euros left for a month. <laughs> oh, my God. So here I just put new batteries into these two keys because the car was complaining the entire time we sat inside. So here is another poor fact. The car had an inspection at Land Rover with 21 kilometers and the next time it was in the shop was at 90,000 kilometers. Okay, there's nothing in between. And also the vehicle does not have any TÜV, so no MOT. So next morning and the first thing I'm going to do is check if the fuel burning heater works. Try to start it remote here. That's a good sign. Oh, the water pump's going. Oh, it got no water in it. That might be a problem. Okay, I think that's working, but I'm gonna have to abort it because we have no coolant in it. Ooh, look at that. Ah, look who is awake already. Okay, so let's see if my battery charged nicely overnight. I'm gonna do a battery test here. Very well. So that's a 80% battery with 100% charge. That will do it. So this is a battery I still had in my basement and I don't have to buy a new one. Look at that. So Christian got it out of limp mode and it's not lowered all the way to the bump stop anymore. And a discovery in function in order, except for the engine failure, looks just so good. Well, at least he's going to be able to buy one battery. Christian likes to buy batteries. <laughs> this one out what is he doing off camera Christian you cannot take off stuff without telling me that would be the first piece after the auxiliary battery that we take off okay I'm just checking you know what the condition is here no that was that was very important stuff I bought a battery tester and I'm really happy with it because it gives you such positive results okay you put it on and it's green on a discovery one of the most important things you got to check when you check out a Discovery 3 or 4 is, I show you, you go in here, you lift that mat up, okay, and you check if it's wet here, here, and down here. If it's wet, you can close it back up and leave. Do not buy one with wet floors, not on this side and not on this side. The car will cripple. You don't know how long it was wet. The leak is easy to fix. That's not the problem, but the wires in here gonna be all corroded including the ECU and the car is gonna develop some nasty faults and you won't be able to fix them so yeah. if it's wet the car is done yeah how do the UK people say you can break it break it exactly yeah, yeah. Then they you... show a picture of a brand new discovery which would have like a 25,000 euro value over <laughs> here and then it says below in Facebook breaking a discovery for who needs the lights <laughs> oh checking oh the wipers are working Oh, even the wishwash fluid is working. <laughs> hey, that discovery, oh my God, over a lift. Because you got one chance and then you have to get out the recovery gear. So how big of a push? It's moving. Good. I don't know. Raise it up for the first time. Good enough, I would think. Yeah, they definitely did some waiting. It's all corroded. Okay, it does look like a city car, okay? It was never washed and it was exposed to salt a lot. So we got corrosion here. It, it comes off really easy, but we're gonna have to brush all this off. But in general, the frame here is looking really good, okay? Yeah. There's no rust on the... This is an ICE car, okay, for our new subscribers, called Internal Combustion Engine. It's not run by electricity. And no, we will never drive an electric vehicle in this family, okay? Whoever wants to get one gets banned. 
What you got to check out when you buy one of these is the front lower suspension arm bushings if the vehicle has more than 120,000 kilometers. They last about 110 to 130,000 kilometers and then they need to be replaced. These are looking like they OEM. They never got replaced because the car has only 135. The level of corrosion here on the bushing itself would not be possible in that short time period. So I'm sure these are shot. They're gonna make clunking noises. They're not very hard to replace. We're gonna do this today on Vera's car, but that's a different video. Okay. Yeah, that one yeah. here. Now this is one of those spots where people in Facebook shoot a picture of the oil and say, did anybody have that before? you just not made for that car, okay? Sell it now. Yeah. <laughs> stop bothering other people. So it's still early. Christian's going to use the ratchet and not the Uga Duga. Ratchet works just fine. Oh, he's going to snap the first bolt. <laughs> Oh, that is not engine oil. I would say it's power steering fluid. Don't go below its stripling. I'm here. What the? It's diesel. It's diesel. <laughs> that was not open in a long time. It's like you're breaking some tomb. It doesn't look like there is a connecting rod sticking through the block. But yeah, it looks well greased and well preserved. Yeah, what are you complaining? <laughs> Maybe the engine failure was caused by a cooling problem. I mean, there are a lot of stupid people driving around out there and they will think, okay, maybe that dash light doesn't mean anything. There's probably some buzzer going on when it's getting really serious. <laughs> oh, oh, we still have to take this pan off here. Oh, are we still not doing the review? There's no. nothing more to say. We already said everything. <laughs> What's the English word? Always sees. <laughs> I think that already broke. Yeah, that one is already the banker. The only way that this is possible is if a vehicle is like zero maintained. If you would take this out every two years, it would not be as corroded. There has more and I don't want to get a, a flat. It's just leaking oil and it needs a new crankshaft and it's probably fine. You also got to check here this joint. If the boot here is torn, these are definitely gone. That's not very expensive to repair. Another thing on these cars is the front wheel bearings. So it's not very good to check these, but this is not bad. You can feel the wheel bearings when you're yeah. driving and uh, so turning. Make sure there is no oil running down here on the front differential case. Yeah, The front drive shaft, it's not clonking. The 8 HP transmission here, I immediately see this is the original Land Rover label. If this thing would have been replaced, in most cases that label would be gone and because it would be a ZF aftermarket. So most likely that transmission has the original oil in it. Replacing that transmission oil is about 220 euros if we do this ourselves because the oil is just 28 euros per liter. Oh, I want to say something. Whoever plans on buying a Discovery 4 now has to be mechanically able don't buy it if you want to have it maintained well, in a shop the, the shops in most cases won't touch these vehicles at least not in germany that yeah. has liability and warranty reasons okay if they touch this car you're going to come back and say ever since you touched my car i got this dash light coming on so you won't find anybody who is actually fixing your car if you buy one so you have to be able to fix them yourself yeah the transfer case here is leaking oil there's going to be a drop of oil right here along these bolts you can see this one is absolutely dry it's also dry here most likely this never got an oil change either if i look how this looks here. yeah 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 but these are extremely robust now here on the drive shaft you check it for clunking and Wait that's good, good. And then I look here at the center bearing oh. and I push this up, see? And this is still good. It's not torn. We're now at the rear differential. No oil here. That's good. And if it is a locking diff, I have connectors back here. And it's not. We already saw that in the computer display. The parking brake, we know it's working. And it's the, working beautifully. <laughs> you can buy one with a broken parking brake, but it's a pain in the ass to replace it. You can watch videos on our channel yeah. on how to do that. Yeah, no torn boots, nothing. This is all good. Yeah. yeah. 
And the air suspension, you saw me testing that, it was down for six months because that's how long it was standing on the lot. And I used the key and I jumped at the battery and it raced right up. It also did not lock a fault. That's also a good sign. It had no air suspension faults. See how this tire wear looks? It's beautiful. It's even. Don't it's very it. even. Very good. Okay, they were running a little low on air, but you can see absolutely even tire wear. Got a little bit of a sawtooth, so these are really old. Yeah. You're gonna have to replace them. I want to talk about the tire. Christian moved on. Oh, you want to lecture about the tire? <laughs> yeah, so it's a Goodyear Wrangler all weather. It has an M plus S sign, but it doesn't have a snowflake. That tire is not legal in Germany in the winter anymore, even if there are no wintry conditions. Listen to Vera, that's true. So, oh boy. <laughs> that happens when you put it on a lift. The car is now in storage for probably two to three weeks before we generate the first video. In parallel to this vehicle, we're also going to have to do the final work on my Land Rover Discovery 4 because most likely that's the one we're going to sell. I have to talk quietly so <laughs> it doesn't hear it, okay? So what we got to do on this car is actually a timing belt and we got to do the brakes and an oil change. I drove this car only for 12,000 kilometers in 1.7 years. So it didn't collect any kilometers, it didn't generate any good footage for us because it's just too reliable. And that's why most likely that guy's gonna be sold. So that's it for this episode. You learned now about our new discovery and hopefully you picked up some details what to watch out for when you buy one of these. They are older cars by now. They are like an old dog, okay? Yes. Once you have it, you fall in love with it and you can't put it down. You're gonna be end up fixing it yeah. forever and putting money into it. So you gotta watch out for if you watch a video which is seven years old because that was produced when these cars were still new. And at that point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and... We'll see you next Sunday. Good. No more lecture? No. Oh, and my dad showed up. Good. Hell, I gotta put him to work now. He's only 84. He can help me take the suspension arms out.